Hello, Suzanne. Hello. How are you? Not too bad. So good, good evening, Paul. Um, first of all, can you tell us a bit about yourself and how you became involved in the paranormal? Well, I've, I've been, in, I've been in, interested in the sort of paranormal and psychical research for, for quite a time now. I suppose it started uh, in the early 70s when I was, about, when I was a young boy mm. um, reading sort of fictional ghost, ghost stories uh, by Mary Danby and, and people like that. And then um, through sort of Hammer films and that sort of thing, and then um, about the sort of mid-70s, um, I came across a couple of books by Dan Farson, which were written for sort of t- a teenage young audience. Uh, there was the Beaver Book of Horror and the Hamlin Book of Ghosts. And they were the first books that I read which um, talked about, you know, real, real uh, uh, cases of, of hauntings and things like that. Um, and then I went on holiday down to... Um, the West Country and uh, paid a visit with my parents to Sanford Orcus Manor House there near Sherbourne which at that time in the mid 70s was had a reputation as being um, the most haunted house in England you know uh, there was a chap down there Colonel Claridge who was a tenant who was showing people around and saying that he was experiencing all these sort of things um, apparitions and strange smells and footsteps and things uh, and that sort of captured my imagination. So uh, I sort of started to look into things, and it sort of went on from there, really. Right, OK. Uh, so um, basically, um, among your publications, um, you've, had, uh, you've had quite a few books out at the moment. We'll talk more about your books later. But you've okay. had two collaborations with the late Peter Underwood. Um, That's right. For those who don't know about Peter, could you tell us a bit more about him and what he did? Well, Peter, uh, Peter, um, Peter, for people of my sort of generation, uh, was one of the major figures. Uh, he was very instrumental in getting people, including myself, interested in, in the paranormal. Peter was born in 1923. Uh, he worked in publishing for many years, uh, and he left publishing in about 1972 to become a full-time writer. Uh, and he was sort of a person, he was in the, the right uh, place at the right time for, to have success in, in the sort of paranormal field. He'd been actively investigating hauntings um, since the late uh, 1940s. I think he came active in sort of about 1947. Uh, he was a member of the very old Harry Price Ghost Club uh, in the late 40s. Um, and in 1960, uh, when the Ghost Club had been revived, he became the president of the Ghost Club, and he was president right the way through until 1994, mm. when there was a bit of internal uh, friction and politics, and, and the Ghost Club parted ways with the Ghost Club and set up his own organisation. But Peter was a, a sort of major writer in the field of, of the paranormal and, and psychological research. He wrote over 50 books. Um, involving uh, hauntings. He really sort of created the sort of the, the gazetteer type book of, of haunted places in this country. Um, and he was also very well involved with uh, investigating Borley Rectory, the, uh, the famous most haunted house in England. Um, so he's a major, major, a major writer, sadly passed away in the last year. Okay. So um, how did you get to meet him yourself and with him? How did I get to meet him? Yes. Well, um, a friend of mine, uh, Eddie Brazil, um, was had been very interested in Borley since he was a sort of a teenager, and in the in about 1972 he went to Borley and um, he ended up corresponding with with Peter. wrote wrote him some letters, and um, fast forward to 2006 when Eddie and I decided that we wanted to try and do a, a book on Borley Rectory together. Um, I had an idea. I thought that maybe we could ask Peter to write a forward. He might be interested in, in, in writing a forward to our, to our book. He'd written two books himself on Borley Rectory, uh, Ghosts of Borley, which came out in 1973, and a later book, Borley Postscript, which, which was about 2001. And um, we contacted Peter, and he was so forthcoming with um, offers to help uh, and information that we asked him to uh, uh, whether he would like to come in as a sort of third author, and he was he was really up for it. Mm. And then the whole project went to another level because we had uh, access to his incredible you know 60 year archive of material on the on the Borley case, 
Um, so it went from there, really, and we, we became, you know, very good friends. We both he and I had been reading his books for years, so he was a bit of a there was a, quite a bit of hero worship going on there. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, it was a it proved to be a very fruitful partnership. We we did the Boiler Electric Companion together, which came out in two thousand and nine. And uh, another book, Shadows in the Nave, which was a, a book on the haunted churches of England, which uh, Peter contributed to as well. But that was it. And uh, I, I was in touch with him, you know, right up until his, till his, uh, till his death last year. OK. And so why do you think Borley is so popular still today? I think it has become the classic haunted house case. It's... Um, it, it has it it ticks all the boxes on many levels it's got this uh, there's the sort of you know interest in the in the paranormal you've got um the involvement of harry price who's uh, 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 you know a very important figure very um interesting figure in 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 the first half of the cycle research in in 20th century price was a bit of a sort of a, an ambiguous person um he wasn't the greatest researcher he was very much uh, a publicist for himself, but he was a stimulated. He was um, he stimulated interest, and he still stimulates interest in in the paranormal. You've got Price involved, um, so you've got a house with potentially there's all sorts of alleged happenings going on there on a sort of a paranormal on a psychic level. And then you've also got this incredibly rich human drama of of the people who are involved there living there over the uh, several years mm. um so it's almost like a today it's almost like a paranormal soap opera if you will yeah um and it, it just has this it's become i think the classic english haunted house uh, i um i was watching um the that film the sequel to the woman in black the hammer which came out earlier this year and there was a shot of the all pie house uh, that they'd made in the film and if you look at it, it it's just like Borley Rectory. It's got the big double gables and everything. So I think Borley has become, in, has become ingrained in the, in the sort of psyche of, of, of um, filmmakers and people interested in the paranormal. So it has just become the classic English haunted house. And I think it will, it will be with us for a long, long time. There's a, there's a Facebook group um, on, uh, led by Leighton Barrable, uh, which has over 700 people on this group now. So there is still a rich interest in Borley Rectory, and I think it will be around for a long time. Mm. Is it true that you were gifted with the Borley Bell by the late Peter Underwood? And if yes, so... Peter, Peter passed the bell to me in 2012. Yeah. It's actually hanging on the back of my house here. Um, the, the bell is uh, a big bronze bell, which used to hang in the courtyard of Borley Rectory. Um, and was there right up. It was there all the way through the different incumbencies, the Ball family, the Smiths, the Foisters, and uh, it survived the fire of uh, 1939 and was there when the building was demolished in the early 1940s, 1943. It was bequeathed, it was given to Harry Price by uh, Captain Gregson, who owned the rectory at that time, Uh, and in 1976 it was given to Peter Underwood by the Harry Price estate, uh, and yes, and Peter um, passed it to me in 2012, and um, yes, yeah, one of the one of the sort of uh, few surviving relics now of the actual rectory itself. Have you had any um, possible phenomena from it? Has anything spooked no, you? No, no, it's been very, very quiet. I'm afraid. <laughs> <laughs> I, I do ring it now and again. It freaks the neighbours out a bit, um, but. Um, it uh, no, there's nothing, nothing ghostly uh, uh, connected with it. I'm afraid. Is there not? Okay. Do you think the rectory was haunted, or is there any truth in the 1956 book, The Haunting of Borley Rectory, that claimed Price had fabricated some of the phenomena? I, I'm prepared. I do think that there was genuine phenomena at Borley, mm. but I don't believe it was on a scale that was championed by, say, Harry Price. Harry Price was a very... Uh, he was a very strange person. He... Um, he was passionately interested in psychical research, um, but he always wanted to be at the forefront of things and seemed to be at the forefront of things. Um, some people don't agree with this, but I, d- I do believe that at times he did fake things. Uh, I do believe that he did play tricks at Borley um, in the past when he was there. 
Um, and I do think that he championed certain sensationalist aspects of Orly haunting, if you will, uh, for his own purposes of publicity and, and, and for his writing. But I do think that there is that there is evidence of genuine phenomena at Borley. Um, things like footsteps being heard in the house, poltergeist-type phenomena, uh, sighting, and sightings of apparitions. And most, obviously the most famous one is the Borley nun, or a nun-like apparition, which was seen in the, in the gardens, um, and in the roadway and in the churchyard opposite uh, for for many years. So I do think I do think Borley was haunted, um, but I'm I'm sceptical as to the level of, of of haunting that it has been championed by various writers in, in the past. Yeah, um, I believe Peter Underwood defended Price against the accusations. He did. Yeah, Peter. Peter was Peter was had a, a very close connection with with Harry Price. I mean, he. Peter was started to get actively involved in in psycho research in the late 40s, about 1947. He was he was starting his own investigations. And in 1947, he actually paid a visit uh, with another friend, Tom Brown. They went to the site of Borley Rectory and spent a night there in the rectory ruins. And the mm. rectory had been demolished by them, but the, the cellars were still open to the sky. And um, he corresponded at that time with Harry Price. Uh, I've got the letters here, um, and Price invited him to join uh, the Ghost Club, which Peter did. And uh, but unfortunately, they never met. They corresponded, um, but unfortunately, Price died of a, of a heart attack uh, in March 1948, a, a week or so before Peter was uh, to attend his first sort of Ghost Club meeting. And I think Peter was very. Um, um, enamoured with Price, he was a sort of a hero figure. Mm. Uh, he did defend Price against fakery. It was a, a thing, an area that we we didn't clash on when we were writing our Borley book, but we agreed to disagree. You yeah. know, I, I felt that there was, uh, that Peter was prepared to give Price a bit more leeway than, than, than I would have done, you know. Um, but uh, undoubtedly Harry Price is a, is a very influential figure, uh, and he was very I'd say the best area of Price's research was his work in the interwar years where he was involved with uh, sales room phenomena and, and investigating mediumship, you know. Um, but, uh, but yes, Peter did. Uh, Peter was a, a big champion of Price, for sure. Right, OK. Now, I understand that in Peter Underwood's will, he left you, you mentioned the um, letters and that, he left you an enormous amount of documents and photographs that he made during his m many investigations. Are there any plans to release more of Peter's work, or is everything re already published? Um, there's, no, I, there's no sort of unpublished uh, uh, manuscripts, other than, you know, uh, uh, paranormal books. Um, other than sort of juvenilia, Peter was a, quite a budding fictional writer as well. So there mm. were some young uh, stories that he wrote at a young age here, teenage age. Um, but uh, no, at present, um, I have what survives of Peter's uh, Peter's um, archive. Um, it's not as it's not as massive, I think, as a lot of people think. No, um, because over several house moves over the years, I think things had to had to go. But um, there is a lot of material here, um, and uh, particularly with the Borley Rectory case, but there's other, other, other things, the, uh, the famous um, tulip staircase uh, apparition photograph at the Queen's House in Greenwich. Um, there's another case that Peter was involved. Um, and there's a lot of letters and correspondence. I mean, I've catalogued a thousand letters so far, uh, and there's still more there. Um, so, uh, yeah, I'm hoping that to, to, to make a, a, con a comprehensive catalogue of Peter's work, which then, you know, will be available for, for people to, to research from in, in the future. When, I'm not sure. There's, a lot of, there's still a lot of work to do on it. But uh, hopefully one day, uh, in the not too foreseeable future, it will be available. Am yeah. I right in thinking that Eddie Brazil's got some, some stuff as well? Uh, Eddie has yes. Eddie Eddie has got a lot of Peter's Peter's books. Yeah. Um, and also he was bequeathed um, some of the Borley um, uh, artif artifacts as well. Um, there's a large uh, stone, the boundary stone, which which um, was in the rectory garden. 
uh, and I think Peter Eddy's got some some of the um, I suppose you could say it's actually bits of the rectory itself. Uh, yeah. When Peter went there in 1947, uh, he sort of collected up um, various odds and ends from the from the rubble of the rectory building. So Eddie has got things like fireplace surrounds and a curtain hook and a bit of bell wire and things like that. Mm-hmm. You know? um, so yes, he's got some some nice sort of juicy relics as well. Yeah. Can I just ask, is there uh, any plans to put all Peter's stuff into a book? Uh, in what way do you mean the uh, his his archive? Do you mean? Yeah. Um, well, I'm hoping I'm hoping to be I'm at the early stages of uh, researching for a biography of Peter. I'd like to I'd like to do a, a biography of Peter. Peter wrote his own autobiography, uh, which was called No Common Task, um, which came out in 1983, um, and I, he wrote to me earlier. Uh, in 2014 to say that he'd been persuaded to try and do another ver- and sort of a, a new autobiography. Um, how much of that he actually completed, I don't know, because I don't have any of that material here. Mm. Um, but uh, I'd certainly, I want to do a, a, bio- a biography of Peter and explore um, the sort of background to his cases and his, and his, and his life uh, and his involvement in you know, psychical research in the sort of post-war years up until the, the, the present day. So that's, that's one thing that I'm working on, yes. Yeah. Okay. Sounds like a large project. It, well, yes, there is a, yeah, it's, it's something that, that needs to, be, to take time just to go through and, and, and do it. I mean, there are lots of gaps. I don't have everything, you know. Yeah. Um, and it, it, it's a bit like um, if anybody have, has been to the, um, the Senate House uh, Library at the University of London to look at Harry Price's, uh, collection. That's one of the major, major psychical research collections. I mean, there are thousands of letters there yeah. uh, and information all about Price's work, which he bequeathed to the University of London. Um, but a lot of it is day-to-day correspondence. You know, it, it, it's 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 interesting mm. in a historical way, but it's not that interesting, if you know what I mean. And, and a lot of it, a lot of Peter's stuff is is day-to-day stuff. You know, um, but it. Um, you know, I'm hoping that, uh, that, 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 that I can do something which, uh, which does him justice, you know, and, and provides people with more information and background to, uh, to his life and his contributions to, the, to paranormal investigation. Right, OK. Was you, was you quite surprised when you were left this stuff? I was stunned, yes. I bet you were. I was stunned, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Just goes to show how much he respected you. Uh, yeah, yeah, I got on very well with Peter. Yeah, yeah. he was, um, yeah, he was a, he was a nice man. He didn't suffer fools gladly. He was, uh, um, yeah, yeah. I was, I was, I was most surprised that the, his, his collection initially was was going to go to the University of London, and then I think it was uh, the Society for Psychical Research was a potential. Um, uh, it was, he talked about me going there at some stage, but. Uh, I don't know how, what what happened there, but um, yeah. no. It, uh, in the end, it uh, it came to me, and I was I was quite uh, quite surprised, you know.